Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on network infrastructure implementations. Today I'm going to be talking about design versus function, and then I'm going to talk about categories of different networks. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Let's begin this session by talking about the difference between design and function. When describing a network, you have a couple of different options. Are you describing its design or its function? If you are going to describe its design, then the first place to start is to describe its topology. Is it a bus network? Is it a star network or a point to point? But if you're going to describe how the network functions, then the first place to start is to describe the category or infrastructure implementation of that network. And with that, let's move on to categories of networks. First up is the local area network or the LAN. Most LANs are encompassed by a single network address range. That address range may be broken up into subgroups through the use of virtual local area networks, VLANs. A LAN can span anywhere from a small area, like a single room, to a whole building or a small group of buildings. The LAN tends to be the highest speed network. It is becoming more common to see 10 gigabits per second networking on the LAN. The most common types of network on the LAN are the 802.3 or Ethernet and or the 802.11 or wireless local area network. These are the most common types of network found on the LAN. Then there is the metropolitan area network or the MAN. It is larger than a LAN. Most often it contains multiple local area networks. MANs, or metropolitan area networks, are often owned by municipalities. When a MAN is owned by a private entity, it is sometimes called a campus area network. Then there is the WAN, the wide area network. Now a WAN spans significant geographic distances. They can be described as a network of networks, and the best example of a WAN is the internet. So how do you tell when a MAN becomes a WAN? Well, as a general rule, if all of the infrastructure implementation has a single owner, then it is not a WAN. If it's large, it'll be a MAN, and if it's not quite so large, it'll be a LAN. But it's really easy to tell a personal area network, a PAN. Why? Because they are extremely distance and size limited. Most often, a PAN is a connection between only two devices. Common examples include a Bluetooth connection between a keyboard and a computer. That's a PAN. Then there are infrared or IR connections between a smartphone and a printer. That's a PAN. Another example of a PAN is near field communication which is now becoming seen between a smartphone and a payment terminal. The PAN tends to have low throughput of data and low power output. They don't consume a whole lot of power. As the distance between devices increase, the throughput on a PAN will decrease. Now a couple of special categories of networks. And first is the supervisory control and data acquisition network, the SCADA network. Now a SCADA network is a type of industrial control system, or ICS, that is designed to control large scale deployments of equipment. The controlled equipment is usually at more than one site. SCADA is often deployed in energy distribution systems by utility companies. SCADA uses a distributed control system, or DCS, to communicate with programmable logic controllers, PLCs, and or remote terminals to control the equipment and processes from a central location. So they have a central location to control equipment that's at remote locations. SCADA networks are often proprietary and often require additional training to understand them and to operate them. 
the last special mention on categories of networks is the media net. It's a network designed and implemented specifically to handle voice and video. They are designed and implemented to remove quality of service issues like latency or jitter that can occur in other types of infrastructure. A video teleconference network or VTC is an example of a media net. They are often implemented as its own infrastructure or as a sub-infrastructure of a larger network. That concludes this session on network infrastructure implementations. I talked about the differences between design and function of networks, and I concluded with a discussion on the different categories of networks. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.